Hello everyone, uh, on this video series I'm gonna go over uh, properties of hydrocarbons. I'm gonna review them and then I will introduce you a new topic at the end. So, we started with the chemical properties of hydrocarbons. We have the following, alkenes. Alkanes and over here we have alkenes and alkynes. Alkanes only have sigma bonds. We know about them. For example, ethane was an alkene. alkene. And over here we have alkene and alkyne. I will give you an example of ethene as an alkene. And then we have ethyne. As you see here, we have second bond second bond and these are pi bonds in here this pi bonds make it unstable well because we have all sigma bonds and they are stronger stronger than pi bonds their alkanes are stable and strong also they they don't have any addition reactions to them but alkenes and alkynes, they have addition reactions. Uh, over here we have alkenes, they can get substitution. In alkenes, we do not have any substitution reaction. If you want to review about the addition reaction, is A added B gives you a product of C, and substitution reactions are like this. Okay, so now we talked about the combustion reaction. Combustion is oxygen goes into reaction. You get the product of carbon dioxide and water. We also learned about how to balance them. So this equation is given to us and it is already balanced. We know that the combustion reactions are given out energy. They give it in terms of light and heat. And that's why they are exothermic reactions. Okay, so we have two types of combustion reaction. One was complete, the other one was incomplete. The complete one was given us carbon dioxide and water, while incomplete was given us carbon monoxide and water. We know that the carbon monoxide is a very dangerous gas and it caused a death within a really short amount of time. And the way we see it, we can uh, see the ratio. Uh, if you have enough oxygen, you see over here for one methane in the balance reaction, I have two moles of oxygen. So for one mole of methane, I got two moles of oxygen. Well, if we look at here in incomplete combustion in the balance reaction, I got two for two moles, I got three moles. That means for one mole, I have 1.5 mole of oxygen, which means I have less. So look at here, it says due to low amount of oxygen, carbon monoxide is produced. And due to high amount of oxygen, CO2 produced. That is their main difference. Also, if you look in here, number four and in number one, the blue flame indicates that we have a complete combustion, while orange, yellow, and red flames means mean that they have incomplete combustions. You need to have this in your mind. So now we're gonna do a couple of Balancing, we did this together with you, but I'm gonna just review it again. So three times, we got three carbons on the left side, so I'm gonna multiply this side by three. And then I have here seven and one hydrogen, so eight hydrogen, so I'm gonna multiply this by four. So I'll add the oxygen, so I got three times two plus four times one, which is 10. And then I divide it by two and it gives me this coefficients. We know that we can change the indexes. We can only add coefficients, which are given in here. 
coefficients okay we can't touch the indexes and this is one of them i will show you some other types and this is the balancing tip for you i will do one more so let's say i got this guy over here i got six carbons i put six onto here and i got 13 plus one which is 14 hydrogen so i put seven in here i balance hydrogens too now i need to add the oxygens it will be six times two plus seven times one it will be 19. so because i got this was for one mole of this right oxygen is coming out from here too and then from here too right i got oxygen coming out because i have one oxygen is adding up to this and both of the so from here i got 12 oxygen coming out 12 oxygen and seven from here right let's see how many oxygen here i got for one mole i got one oxygen so they need to add up i need to have 19 oxygen here and 19 oxygen here right so this would be 18 oxygen for this guy which will make this coefficient 9 that's why it will be 1 9 6 7 and these coefficients are giving you the ratio ratio for example if you have one mole one mole of c6 h13 oh as a reactant you would get you would get six mole of co2 and then seven mole of water in terms of ratio okay so it is given us here deduce the balanced equation for the complete combustion for pentane hexane and over here we have the task two for heptane and octane i'm just gonna do octane in here for you so it says telling us deduce balanced equation for the complete combustion of given hydrocarbons and calculate the mole amount of carbon dioxide and mass of water so i know that octa means eight and it is a which is alkene so it will be h 18 because alkane formula is CnH2n plus 2 right so I get oxygen in here as reactant and my product would be CO2 and water so I'm just gonna rewrite oh sorry okay so now I got eight carbons on both sides and then I do nine in here I get hydrogen balance two and then I check the number of oxygen so I got here 16 plus nine oxygens which gives me 25 so what I will do first of all I'm just gonna delete this plus and put it here this would be 25 over 2 and then I will multiply everything by 2 and this would be 225 and then over here I'll make this by multiply by 2 which is 16 and 18 so this is my ratio it is telling me mole amount of carbon for two moles of hydrocarbon so as you see here i have two moles in here right so two moles of c8h18 would give me how many moles of carbon dioxide 16 moles of carbon dioxide so this is one of your answers and then it is asking mass of water right so we know we need to find first of all for two mole how many moles of water is coming out so you see it's 18 here so 18 mole of water mole of water now we need to find the mass of this 
you need to find the molar mass of water molar mass of water is gonna be like this because I have two hydrogens it will be two times molar mass of hydrogen plus one time molar mass of oxygen because I have only oxygen one there and if you check the periodic table hydrogen has one in the bottom winning it will it has a molar mass of one two times one and then oxygen if you check the bottom of it it is 16 and it will make you give you 18 gram per mole for the molar mass of water okay and then all you need to do is to use proportion so for one mole one mole you have 18 gram right and then for 18 mole because you're looking for 18 mole in here it would be x gram and x would be 18 times 18 grams you would do the calculation using your calculator and then it should be around 180 plus So 180 plus 80 plus 64 and then it would be uh, like this 180 plus 144 it would be 324 gram of water okay so now we're gonna discuss the reaction addition reaction bromination hydrogenation and hydration so bromination meaning means addition of bromine hydrogenation means addition of hydrogen hydration means addition of water so we have this bromination of ethylene we know its name as ethene but its common name in the industry is called also ethylene. So, once you have ethylene, you have add inside bromine and you get this product. The way this reaction happens, I showed you in the class, I will show here again. So, this carbon is like this, right? This double bond. So, this bromine comes from the bottom. And then and then we have this bond breaking down and this pi bond breaking down and then we have a new bond starting to form and this is giving you so i bo i broke broke two bonds i made two bonds and you see I broke one bond here, pi bond and in between bromine. So one bond here and one bond here and then I made another two bonds. So this is the way it looks. You see carbon still has four valency. Right? And then this is the product we have. So there is one thing. We call this a chemical test. And the reason is, is that you see this bromine, bromine is purple reddish color. This is bromine. What we had in the beginning, it was this ethylene, ethylene is colorless, colorless. We added into this colorless, the bromine, which is reddish, reddish brown. So this bromine is here with the ethylene and then after some time you see that the brownish red is gone and then after certain time all of the bromine was re reacted with this and gave us the colorless 1,2-D bromoethane. That means that this test we wanted to test if this unknown, unknown substance unknown so in this case we know that it is ethylene but we were gonna give you unknown substance and we're gonna tell you tell us if it is unsaturated or not and we 
we know that because ethylene has this pi bond, it will react with bromine. And this reddish brown, reddish, reddish brown color will disappear and it will give us the colorless, colorless. That's what we call a positive bromination test, positive test. So if you have, for example, alkane here, alkane, you, you know that if you add the bromine in there, there would be no reaction, no reaction. The color would be, the color would stay, the color would not change, color would not change, change. And it's gonna stay reddish brown, reddish brown. It will give negative result, negative result, negative test result for bromination. Is this clear? I hope it is clear. So bromination is a type of test for unsaturation. For example, cyclohexene. You look at here, cyclo, we know that hex is, we know that hex is six. And then we got a double bond here. So you got add bromine on it. And then you know that we're going to break two bonds, the pi bonds, and we're going to add bromine here and then bromine here. I'm going to draw you, I'm going to draw you condensed form of this, even expanded form. So look at here, I got carbon, carbon, carbon. And then carbon, carbon here. I have hydrogens. I know that there is going to be one double bond, right? And I will fill it with hydrogen. You see, carbon has four bonds. And then I added bromine here, brom2. I know that I'm going to break this bond and the bond. The bone in between bromine is going to be broken down too, right? And this bromine will attach to this carbon and this will attach to this carbon. And this is the final product. It's the way it looks. Look at here. I got, I'm, I'm going to draw the skeleton first. So bromine, bromine. And then you put your hydrogens. There you go. And the line line form is this. So now, once we're done with one of the addition, we're gonna move on to the hydrogenation. Hydrogenation, as from the name, it means adding hydrogen to. So now we're going to, uh, in here, we're saturation of alkene with hydrogen atoms. So you know that unsaturated, you know what it uh, unsaturated is. Unsaturated means you need to have a pi bond, pi bond, meaning you need to have a double bond. For example, here I have one double bond, second and third double bond. These are all double bonds so the more more double bond means you have more unsaturation but when you have no double bonds that means you're you're unsaturated you're saturated sorry you're saturated and saturated means full with hydrogen full with hydrogen like there is no place for me to add hydrogens here, right? Because it is full. All the bones are full. So look at here. I got ethene, or we call it ethylene, the common name in the industry. So I add hydrogen, but look at here. I need to use a catalyst. So there are three catalysts here. Nickel, palladium, and platinum. You need to know this, that 
only these three metals are the ones that are giving you hydrogenation reaction. If you don't write this, we will not accept your answer. Okay, so you need to write it on top of the arrow. So this hydrogen comes from the bottom. Okay, and then we break this bond and we break this bond. And then we were making a new two bonds. So two bonds broke, two bonds made. And look at the product. See, voila. Now we have a tain. And this is saturated, right? And this was unsaturated. So from unsaturated, we got saturated. Now there is another one. For example, two butene, or could be but two in. So look at here, we broke this bond and we added hydrogens onto this carbon and this carbon and look at here. Now I have butane. You see how it's full with hydrogens? I only added two hydrogens. The same thing with cyclohexane. There was a double bond. I break this bond, I add one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here. Look at here, the product is cyclohexane. This is how we add hydrogens on it. Okay, so it would, as you know, that if I had cyclohexane in the beginning and I would add hydrogen in here with palladium, I would not get anything from here because all of them are full, only unsaturated. Saturated hydrocarbon would give me this. Hydrocarbon, even organic, organic compound. Okay, so now I've got hydrogenation. Hydrogenation is addition of hydrogen. Sorry, it is still continuation what I'm talking about. Uh, so, hydrogenation reaction can be used in food industry to convert liquid oils like sunflower to their solid alternatives. So you see this oil in here, this is the liquid form of medusa oil. Now when you have, when you have unsaturation, you see this unsaturation? When I add on top of it hydrogen with a catalyst, I get saturated compound. And this saturated compound becomes solid state. You need to know this okay so I have one more example in here oleic acid it's in olive oil you see this double bond here once we add hydrogen on it with palladium look at here now this bond is gone now in this case we have a solid form of stearic acid you need to know this thing because in the industry people are doing this a lot when you add hydrogen on top of a liquid oil, liquid oil, we add hydrogen, they become, with palladium, they become solid oil. And this is, most of the time, is unhealthy. Okay, so this time we're going to talk about hydration, but... Uh, I'm going to talk about the alkenes first, the type of the alkenes, and then I will continue with hydration. So alkenes are divided into two, the symmetrical and asymmetrical ones. It's super easy. So look at this alkene. When I put a line in between this side and this side, they are the same. So this would be symmetrical. Again, if I divide this guy from the middle, through the double bond, it should, uh, this side and this side is similar, and that's why it is symmetrical. But when you look at this one, when I have a double bond and I divide it through the middle, the left side and the right side, they are not the same. So they are asymmetrical. So same thing with this alkene. Left side and right side, they are not looking the same. Okay. So now let's go back to, we're going to go back to hydration. Hydration is also another addition. 
this time we added water so look at here you see h2o h2o is like this right so it is made of two hydrogens and one oxygen look at here the way they added one hydrogen and oh so water is here water has been added but for this you need to have acidic condition that is one one uh, condition that you need to keep in mind and the water is here i will show you a sh sh uh, short mechanism of this so i have here hydrogen and then i have here oxygen and the hydrogen so now this bond is breaking down and one of the bonds between connecting hydrogen to oxygen is breaking down and then i making another bond with this one and i make another bond with this one so look at here now the final product is going to be looking like this so to one carbon i connected hydrogen to another carbon i connected the oh group and now this oh group is actually a functional group of alcohol alcohol just like there are alkenes and alkenes alkynes if uh, they are th they have their own functional group alcohol alcohol they have their own functional group when you have oh that means that you are alcohol and because you see here I got two carbons, right? Two carbons here. If I had hydrogen here, this would be looking called ethane. But when I remove one hydrogen and put in place instead of it OH, it becomes ethanol. And it is the main ingredient of the vodka. So this hydrogen plus, before I go. Last year you discussed, for example, hydrochloric acid, it ionizes, gives hydrogen plus and chlorine minus or sulfuric acid gives hydrogen plus and then SO4 negative 2 all of the acids are giving hydrogen plus ions and this hydrogen plus means that you need to have acidic environment for this reaction just like in hydrogenation you need to have catalysts for example over here you need to have acidic environment and this acidic environment is denoted either H plus or you could write here HSO4, hydrogen chloride but just as you, it's given in your note write H plus on top of the arrow and you're just fine for this reaction okay so now we're giving you out of some examples of those so I'm just gonna write the expanded form of this so look at here i got one one two three four carbons right i'm gonna put the double bond and we'll fill it with hydrogens and then here and then here okay just like so and then my water comes in actually the way i will write this I'm gonna make this hydrogen up here to show you the mechanism. So water comes in from the bottom and then this bond is breaking, this bond is breaking. I'm connecting one carbon to this hydrogen and one carbon to this OH. And this is the final product. Look at here, I got OH and then I just fill the rest as it was before I just broke down the double bond and then I put hydrogen and OH that's all I did look at here this is the one that has been added and I removed this double bond only left the single bond this is the final product and line diagram of this is looking just like this or you can do like this up to you whichever way you want to go they are the same you just change the angle and for this one I'm just gonna draw you the expanded form actually I will just do condensed form so CH I got CH C 
CH2, CH2, I got CH2, CH2 like this. And then I add the water, look at here, I got hydrogen, hydrogen like this. And then I break this bond, I break this bond, I connect this carbon to hydrogen and this carbon to OH. And look at here, the product is like this. CH2, 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 and this CH, and this would be OH. Just like this, and the line diagram would be just like this. Okay? Now, there's one thing about hydration reaction. It's called Markovnikov rule. Markovnikov rule is like this. It says that in hydration reaction with asymmetrical alkanes. It's only the problem with asymmetrical alkanes. The H ion adds to the carbons adjacent to the double bond and that has the most number of hydrogen. So, and then it says that rich get richer. I, I will explain you in a simpler way. So if you look at here, this asymmetric compound, so if I draw the line, you see that this and this left and right side, they're not the same. Let's look at these carbons. If I write the expanded form of this, expanded form. So I have a double bond here. I know that I'm going to add my hydrogen somewhere and OH somewhere but I'm not sure what I'm going to add it because in symmetric one, it was, everything was okay. You see, this is symmetric too. And this one is symmetric as well. It's not a problem. Whatever you add, you can add hydrogen here, OH here, or hydrogen here, OH here, doesn't matter. But when you have a symmetric one, you got to follow the rules. So I got two carbons. If you look at this, carbon here I have directly attached one hydrogen to this but this carbon has only has actually two carbons attached to it so which uh, whichever one has more carbon is called richer like he's rich rich because he has more hydrogen directly directly attached direct means that you see this bones it's directly attached to him so this carbon has more c1 and c2 so c2 is richer than c1 so look at the rule it says rich gets richer, meaning that he gets even more hydrogen. That means we told you that in water, hydrogen and OH is adding up, right? Because, because this guy is richer, he's going to get the hydrogen, okay? And the, this carbon is going to get the OH because he's poor, because he has only one hydrogen attached to him, but he has one and two. So the final product is going to be looking like this. You see this carbon, which is the blue one, he got the hydrogen, while the other carbon, he had only one hydrogen, that's why he got the OH. This is the rule, Markovnikov rule. So you see this H2SO4, also you can write H1. So now look at here. I have this compound. If you look at here, this looks asymmetric because this side and this side, they are not the same. Okay. So if you check out the number of hydrogens, like this carbon, one, there is one bone, two, three, four. He has everything attached to carbon. He has no hydrogen. While this carbon has one hydrogen on it. 
I'm gonna draw you the expanded form of this. So I got here one carbon, carbon, double bond, carbon, carbon, and carbon. This is like this. And if we put in the filling with the hydrogens, you see here, I fill it with hydrogen so I can have four bonds in total on each carbon. So if you look at these carbons, carbon one and two, which one is rich? Obviously the one over here is rich. That's why he's gonna get the hydrogen and this guy is gonna get the OH. So the final product is going to be looking like this. I will just delete delete this bond and then I will attach I will attach hydrogen hydrogen here and then OH here. So the product will be looking like this. So carbon carbon Carbon. I'm just gonna draw you the line diagram of this so so the final product would be just like this OH okay because of the Markovnikov rule okay so now there is one more reaction oxidation of potassium permanganate solution so this potassium permanganate solution is a salt with a purple color. It's a solid compound dissolves in water. This reaction is used in laboratory for chemical test of unsaturated hydrocarbons. Again, unsaturated. That means you need to have a double bond or triple bond. So look at this guy. I have my etine here. Etine and then potassium permanganate and the water. The reaction I have is this. So to each side I add OH. This time I didn't add H and OH, but I added OH and OH for both sides. Okay. So look at here that I have. The product is called ethylene glycol. You don't have to memorize this, but it is the antifreeze that is used in the cars. You know, like in a, when you have a cold weather or something, and when you add this antifreeze, it keeps you, uh, it keeps your car going all the time. So as a product, you have this purple color. This purple color disappears if you have unsaturated compound like ethene in here. So, and this is called a Bayer test, Bayer test. If you remember, we already talked about bromination test for, for unsaturated hydrocarbon. Now we also have the Bayer test. Look at here, the potassium permanganate purple react. So because I told you that alkanes they do not react. So for alkane, I it is saturated, right? For example, ethane. That's why potassium permanganate will stay purple. The Bayer's test will be negative. While in alkene, it's going to turn out positive because it will transfer purple into yellow. So from purple, Purple. It will go into yellow and sometimes even colorless, depending on concentration. And this is called Bayer test. And then look at the product. I told you, so this is the way you write the reaction. So in the bottom, this double bond. Uh, so let's say I have hydrogen like this. This double bond breaks down. And then in the bottom, I add OH, and then I add another OH. So the mechanism of this, I'm not going to go into this. But this is the way it looks. So CH, like this. And then on the bottom, I add two OH. And we call this DO. 
The reason we call it Eol is because D means two and all is for OH. So Diol, as we say alcohol, and this is Diol. Alcohol only has one OH. Okay, so you can do the reading for yourself. And we're going to continue with the reading material conclusion. Please do this reading on your own. This is kind of explaining difference between alkenes and alkenes. And the next topic is going to be about the chemical properties. Chemical properties, we have, we're going to just get started with the polymerization. What is polymer? Polymer, uh, as an analogy, I could say that poly means many, many. Poly means many. Let's say if the one brick is mono, meaning a single, if you have multiple bricks, you have polymer. So this guy by themselves are monomers, and this is polymers. This is an analogy. This is what we have in chemistry, and I'm going to show you which one we have. So we start with monomer, we connect them together, and we make the polymers. For example, in our polymers, we are actually surrounded by polymers. And we even call them by their names, but this is the first time probably some of you are actually going to go through this. You see these cups, you see these lunch bags, they are all polystyrene. They are actually polymers. Nylons is a polymer. Polyester clothes, they are polymer. PVC, you see all the pipes, they are all polymers that we have in our life. Backlights, the accessories, and the polyethylene bags we have. And we have also natural polymers like silk, wool, we have cotton, and then we have synthetic polymers that we make in the lab, PET bottles, PE films, PP granules. These are all kinds of polymers that we use in our daily life. So I told you, poly means many mares, repeat units or building blocks. So I have this all monomers around. I use polymerization reaction, reaction, and I connect the polymers. I make something strong. Like a, let's, I told, like, let's say we're making a PE film, right? Normally it's made like from single molecules, but once I connect them, I make a durable film like this, the one that I can wrap my food with, okay, or I can use it anywhere else. There are two ways of producing polymers. One is through addition, and then the other one is condensation. Addition once is, we're not going to go into actually the details of it, but basically it is the way it looks is like this. So I have, let's say, a thin molecule, right? This is a monomer. Monomer. What I do is that I break this bond and I connect this monomer to another monomer, which is another CH. And then I connect this guy to another monomer. Okay, looking like this. So if I'll spread them out, you see all these monomers, they are connected together. And there's one more connecting from the left side. They are connecting all to each other through polymerization. You see this polymerization and they make the strong bonds and they make the polymers and which we use in our daily life and the way you name it is that let's say the name of the guy is ethylene uh, once it becomes polymer you see the only thing they did is they broke the bond they connected from the both sides called it polyethylene let's say you have propene right and then you use your reaction polymerization, you, you, you have to definitely use catalyst for this. 
and then what happens is that you break this bond and then you connect from both sides and it becomes polypropylene I know you're thinking that it's gonna be propene polypropene it's also called polypropene but uh, in the industry they call them propylene too polypropylene so this guy is called vinyl chloride and once you polymerize it meaning you break this bond and connect from the both sides you see it has many many of those exact same things this is what the end stands for and it makes polyvinyl chloride now it's a, it's asking us write the question for the addition polymerization of protein and chloroethene so let's do it together i have protein protein and this is my protein right i'm gonna write the condensed form of this so ch and then i got ch2 right this is the way the protein looks like this is my monomer let's make the polymer of this meaning that i will break this bond one of the bonds so this is the way it's gonna look like once i polymerize it so i will use catalyst and i will polymerize this this is the way it's gonna look so i got ch here i've got ch and then h and then i will write this part meaning ch2 and ch3 right so this is the way it looks i will connect it like this and i'm gonna put n in here this is my polymer that means that i have many 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 blocks of this connected to each other now it's also asking for chloroethene so ethene is looking like this right chloroethene they, they also call this vinyl vinyl chloride we have seen it up here up there vinyl chloride so i need to polymerize this right catalyst polymerize so what i will do i'm just going to break this bond and i will connect all of them together and this would be ch h ch and then core and then over here i have connected other blocks and this guy will be my polymer so this is my monomer and this is my polymer and then we have practice an example so it's telling us the problem solving with polymers this is the mass of of the mass of polymer m is the molar mass of monomer and n is the degree of polymerization so now it's telling us find the relative molecular mass of polymer it's telling us to find the m big m which was formed from ethylene polymerization ethylene i told you the formula is ch c2h4 right once we polymerize it with catalyst polymerize we get the product of c like this we broke the bond and then we connect we connect through it like this and this is number of n so let's find first of all the molar mass of molar mass of c2h4 right this is c2h4 so i got two carbons two times 12 because carbon has a molar mass of 12 and then 4 times 1 because hydrogen got the molar mass of 1 and this would be 24 plus 4 it would be 28 right and now it's telling us degree of polymerization is 3000 so n here is 3000 so the big m would be 3000 multiplied by 28 and then 28 grams so 
this would be 3 times 20, so 84,000 grams, which is 84 kilograms. And then I will leave you to do it on your own for this one using the propene. And I will see you guys in the class. Good luck.